We're focusing on a new spot tonight, one that you haven't focused on before. Find some out-of-the-way spot in the body that's been neglected. And place your attention there. And whether you feel the breath there or don't feel the breath there, that's not the issue. Just remind yourself there is breath there. So whatever you feel there qualifies as breath, but you don't have to make it move or do anything special. Just notice it. Otherwise, breathe in a comfortable way. Or if you like, you can focus on two spots. There's an old teacher I knew in Thailand, an old school teacher, retired. I stayed at Wanasukaram and had a reputation among the other lay meditators for being really quick and getting into concentration. There was another old retired woman who was quite psychic, and she could actually notice other people's minds. And she'd tell me that by the time she got her mind to settle down, if she was checking out other people, this other school teacher had already had her mind firmly in concentration, just stayed there. And her trick was to focus on two spots at once. She said it was like focusing one spot in the middle of the brain and another spot down at the tailbone. And think of a line connecting the two. She said it was like hooking two ends of an electric line to a battery. And as soon as you, both ends were connected, okay, the light between those two ends lit up. That was her trick for getting concentrated really fast. So you might try that and see if it works for you. You can, you can choose those two spots if you like, or any other two spots. The point here is there is a lot of room for variation in the techniques. You hear so many times, focus your attention on one spot, and here's another way of doing it, two spots. You might look at how you conceive the focusing. Because our notion of focusing is affected so much by the way our eyes work. It's one of the ways we gain a sense of the three-dimensionality of space around us, that you change the focus of your eyes and see what comes into focus, what goes out of focus. And after a while, you can have a sense of what's near and what's far. When you think about focusing on the breath, there may be that mental picture that you the observer are right here, and the focal point is out there someplace else. We'll try to bring the focal point in to right where the observer is. In other words, instead of having the focal point ahead of the lens, have it right in the lens. And see what that does. One of the points of experimenting with a meditation like this is to uncover some of the perceptions you've been using that underlie the way you're functioning. And if you don't ask strange questions or try a few strange variations, you'll never see how strange your underlying assumptions are. And for all this time you've thought, well, it had to be that way, but it doesn't have to be that way. And you can get better results by changing your assumptions. For the time being, just use this as a technique for seeing what works and what doesn't work, getting the mind into concentration. Because that's where this playing with assumptions is important. You actually get results out of it. We're not just playing little mental exercises. You try a variation, stick with it for a while see what it does. It's like experimenting with a recipe. After years and years and years of following Julia Child, she said, wait a minute, let's change this, let's change that. Why does it have to be the way she says it is? And in some cases you'll find there was a good reason. In other cases, well, no. It simply had something to do with her taste. But you have your taste, and after all, it's 
No, but that image of that cook, you're trying to find something that pleases you as you're sitting here meditating, something that keeps you engaged, and engages your imagination, and calls a few things into question. So many people have trouble staying with the breath or getting in touch with the breath energies in the body because their conception of how their body works is determined by what they're told about how it works, what other people can observe, what a doctor say or a machine can tell them about their breath. But when you're meditating, you're not looking at the body from outside, you're experiencing it from within. That means throwing out a lot of your old preconceptions. If you function totally in a materialistic universe, it's going to make you suffer. And yet, when we come to meditation, even though part of us realizes that materialism is a miserable way of thinking, we still carry a lot of materialistic assumptions into the mind. To so turn things around, you're experiencing things from within. There's that old question where Linus comes up to Lucy and touches her. He says, see how cold my hands are? She says, yes, they're so cold. Well, how do you know they're cold when you're in them? Well, you actually know better than anybody else how it feels from within. In fact, nobody else can know. You're the only one who knows how your body feels from within. And so it's up to you to explore. Try to give this your full attention, use some ingenuity, and see what happens. If you don't like focusing on one spot or two spots, think of yourself as focusing on every spot in the body. When you breathe in, every cell is breathing in breathing out. If you're using Bhutto, every little point in your awareness is shouting Bhutto, Bhutto. Everything becomes a spot. They're all equally there. You're all equally present to every spot. Try that and see if it gets you into the present moment. This is one of the reasons why there are so many different variations on breath meditation. Look, just in the forest tradition, there are lots of different ways that the Ajans have taught meditation. Because each of them was out in the forest, alone for long periods of time dealing with his own breath, dealing with his own mind. And when things didn't work, to whom could they go? They had to depend on their own ingenuity and their own powers of observation. This is why John Fuang used these words over and over and over again. Be observant. Use your ingenuity. Be observant again. Learn to question your assumptions. Remember when I first went to Thailand, it was it was very typical for Westerners to generalize about the Thais. The Thais believe this, the Thais believe that. And I actually found that Thai people had were much more individualistic in their views of the world, how things worked than most of the Americans I knew. Part of this, of course, is because they had less of a formal education. They learned how to read, how to write, how to do arithmetic, and that was it. And so they spent the rest of their lives engaging the world, and each person had come up with his or her own way, own way of conceiving that engagement. And it was really interesting talking to them and getting their ideas about, about how things worked. And some of their ideas were off the mark as far as areas where it didn't really affect them, their daily lives. But if it was something that affected their daily lives, they're extremely observant and extremely ingenious. And the same principle applies to the meditation.
So that's a quality we should all develop as meditators. When you're told something, try it out for a while. If it works, stick with it. If it doesn't work, well, flip it around a little bit. Turn it inside out. Try the opposite. Try to conceive what the opposite might be. Maybe your conception of the opposite is a little narrow. Think all those questions that were asked to the Buddha, that were the hot questions of the day. Is the cosmos eternal? Is it not eternal? Is it finite? Is it infinite? And people had come up with all sorts of responses to the question. Well, the Buddha had a new response, which was that that's a question that's not even worth asking. It blew their minds. Well, there's a lot of meditation where you have to learn how to blow your own mind. Because after all, when you come to the truths and the realizations that are going to give you release, there are things that have been right here in front of you and you didn't see them. And they're totally unexpected. And so if you just simply plod through the instructions, you're never going to come across anything unexpected. Learn to play with things. Learn to experiment. Some of the experiments won't work, and if they don't, we'll just throw them away. But if they do, you've found something that's really good. Something will help you see things in a new way. That's when you know your meditation is working. That's how it progresses. <laughs>